Welcome back. Today I'll be doing video what was requested from some of you guys multiple times across different videos. So this is the day I'll be putting an older but still highly capable CPU, the one and only i7-3930K, through a real test in PlayStation 3 in Nintendo Switch emulators, RPCS3 and Ryujinx. We will see how well or not so well CPU handles one classic PlayStation 3 game and five popular Nintendo Switch games. But first I will tell you a little about the setup that I will be using. Like I already said, I will be testing i7-3930K with 32GB of DDR3 memory, clocked to 1600 MHz. And to be sure that the graphics card wouldn't be a bottleneck, I paired CPU with Gigabyte Aorus GTX 1080 Ti with 11GB of VRAM. For storage, I'll be using reliable Patriot P220 SSD with total capacity of 1TB. If you want to know more about this CPU specifically, then check out one of my previous videos, where I test this processor in 8 different games. I will put link to that video right around here, somewhere here, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, back to testing. First up, we are testing games on Ryujinx emulator, which is designed to run Nintendo Switch games. The Switch isn't as demanding as PlayStation 3 emulator, but some titles can still be challenged to emulate smoothly. So let's test 5 popular games and see how the i7-3930K holds. Starting up the emulator, I set graphical settings to run games in 1080p. Anti-aliasing I set to FXAA and everything else I left default, except I turned off VSync for compatibility reasons. And with that I started with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a kart racing game developed and published by Nintendo for Nintendo Switch. It is an enhanced version of Mario Kart 8 from the Wii U. Because of being console game, there is not much to change in in-game settings. But this racing game wasn't a big struggle for i7. 3930K averaged 73 FPS, minimum was 37.8 and maximum was 84.8 frames per second. Maybe sometimes at race start or in big explosions there was a small frame drop, but nothing that critical to not enjoy this game. Next up I run Snake Pass, a game that was inspired by real snake moving physics. And this game is built in Unreal Engine 4, so it really leveraged of smooth and detailed game environments. And in this game CPU averaged 29.7 FPS and minimum of 0.7 and maximum of 31.9 FPS. Now you may ask why framerate is so low? Well, because this game is hard locked to 30 frames per second. That's why you might not see more than 30 ish FPS. But still, with FPS lock, this game is really fun to play. If you have Nintendo Switch or emulator installed on your computer, then I really recommend this game, especially if you have controller. But next in the list is Skydrift Infinity, the game that combines the mechanics of flight simulation and intense racing. And this was only a game that offered quality setting in game. So, graphics settings set to quality, average frame rate was 65.6 FPS, where minimum was just 37.7 frames per second, and maximum was 88.9 FPS. If you enjoy games like Mario Kart but want a little aerial twist, then this game is perfect. And now, game that raised over 2 million dollars in Kickstarter back in 2015. Ukulele Game is a vibrant 3D platformer with nostalgia, quirky humor and jokes from classic platformers like Donkey Kong 64 or Banjo-Kazooie. And in Yoka, i7 averaged 55.2 frames per second with minimum of 14.8 and maximum of 79.3 FPS. In this game, sometimes CPU struggled with rich animations when breaking barrels or boxes, but otherwise game runs smoothly. And now, the last game which I will be testing on this emulator, and that game is none other than Team Sonic Racing, fast-paced kart racing game developed by Sumo Digital and published by Sega. It features iconic Sonic characters, customizable vehicles and diverse racing modes, including online multiplayer and a story-driven adventure mode. But I personally prefer Team Adventure mode and 3930K averaged 73.3 FPS, minimum was 22.6 FPS and maximum was 167.4 frames per second. And here FPS was a little bit chaotic, because framerate differs by the map you choose to play. But still, i7 didn't struggle that much to not enjoy kart racing. But now it's time for PlayStation 3 emulator. 
which is known for its heavy demands on both the CPU and GPU. That's why here I set every possible setting for better performance, rather than graphical quality. But still, in 1080p, just with shader quality set to low and anti-aliasing set to disabled. This emulator is known in the past to give a quad-core processors a sweat, but i7-3930K is a 6-core 12-thread CPU, so let's see how it holds up. And of course, I couldn't skip one of the most popular titles in PlayStation 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, a game who serves a thrilling conclusion to the Modern Warfare trilogy, making it a staple of the Call of Duty franchise on the PlayStation 3. But even without 12 threads enabled in emulator, processor averaged 21.4 FPS, minimum was 11.1 FPS, and maximum was 46.9 FPS. Yeah, well maybe it's my fault of configuring emulator or something else, but game wasn't even close to be playable, not even mentioning enjoyable, game stutter even in loading screen. Long story short, it was bad. But maybe you guys have answers to this tragedy in RPCS3, write in the comments down below. And in the end, I just want to say that I didn't even know that emulators and game emulation itself can be so demanding on CPU. And I want to thank you guys for suggesting this whole idea of game emulators. It's a different world for me. But after all this, I think that I have some knowledge from all this game emulation iceberg. But now, really big thanks for everyone who get till the end of this video. Oh, and don't forget to click like button. That gives me motivation to make next video. And maybe even consider subscribing if you love the computers. But now, see you in the next video.